Hi, and welcome for another episode of Quadratic C running on Java. My name is Ilya Gazman. Let's hack. During our last episode, we improved the logging. In this episode, we are going to start doing some serious optimization. Multiple polynomial. So far, we've been working on uh, the below polynomial. We've been uh, picking a value near square, square n and iterating over it, trying to see the y. The problem with this approach is that y will continue to grow forever. And the chances that y will be, be smooth will go and decrease. So our saving speed will decrease as we move forward. Peter Montgomery offered another polynomial um, to solve this solution, to, to find a better solution for this. ax plus b, uh, power 2 minus n. If we choose b power 2 minus n to, to be equal to some ac, then we can rewrite the entire thing as that. and extract a out of it. Now, if we choose a to be a square, then we can see just this expression, just that. To find, such, uh, to find a solution for b minus n equals ac, b power two, we can pick a prime q near four square of n, then define a as uh, Q power 2 and also B power 2 minus N will only have a solution if N is quadratic residue of Q so we also need to check that um, to calculate B we need to compute the modular square root of N of course I didn't know how to do it <laughs> so um, I, borrow, I, I found a, a library for it I'll, I'll show you uh, in a moment we can do it by first calculating the modular square root of n mod q and then lifting the root mod q power 2 using a hence a lemma. To solve that part, it took me a day, and eventually uh, Carl uh, helped me to help me do the math. It's the trick is to say that a plus kq is equal to n mod q power 2. And then uh, you can extract k, uh, which is b in our case. OK. So the idea of multiple <clears throat> the idea of multiple polynomials is to periodically pick new q and see over a new polynomial. It also makes it easy to, to see in parallel. In fact, you need to be picked up near a uh, square 2n divided by m square, where m is the sieving range. Each time after sieving m values, we switch a polynomial. This way it is promised that y will always be around m uh, square 2n for, for the range of minus m to m. The only problem with this optimization is that it requires rebuilding the wheels each time we, are, we change the polynomial. And that is expensive. But nevertheless, it allows us to get new records of speed. And it's a great step moving forward. So a lot of math going on in, in this episode. And um, so I prepared a solution for it. And I will just walk you through, through the source code. I also uh, improved the logging to, to show each piece of our code how long does it take. It helps with optimization. Um, OK, so those are the magic numbers that we start with. I will come back to this later. We are working with the same matrix. 
this is how we calculate Q, how we pick Q. So it's n times n multiply 2 square divided by loop size and loop count. We will see what those two in a moment, but their, but their multiplication is m, as we've seen in here. And then square. So this is q. Then uh, we are looking for uh, prime q's, and we are checking if the q is uh, is root in quadratic uh, residue of if n is 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 in quadratic residue of q. The starting time and last update time. This is for for logging. Okay. So this is a new thing that I added for logs. Remember that we declared it as enum. So this is why it has um, four pieces of code that I want to to measure their time, and I have two methods: start and end. And it basically counts the total total time in nanoseconds. So start will just reset the start time nano, and end will add the current time minus start time nano to the total time nanoseconds. Okay. So in here, I'm measuring the time that it takes to to make this part, which is the cho the choice of the polynomial. So each time uh, we are running in, in a loop and we are going to run it until we we'll find a solution, we are picking a next Q. If N is quadratic residue uh, mod that Q, then we are doing the calculation. We, we calculate a mod square of a N mod square Q and for that, I used a Google Elliptic Curve Crypto. Apparently, um, they have a, a mod square function in there. It's it looks nice. I don't know. It it works. It, I compared with few other options, and it was um, not even the fastest, but just worked. So, um, so I'm. So I picked that library. Um, so A is uh, is the power of Q. Then K um, it's that. Oh, and B it's not it's not equal to K. B equals to K multiple multiply Q and add A root. So this is B. This is how we are doing the polynomial setup. Then we need to rebuild the, the, the wheels. And then we are starting the, the search for smooth file, which didn't change much. The build wheels did change. And in here, we are calculating uh, the starting position differently. We are not using the result algorithm as we did uh, earlier. but those are the the calculations. Also, uh, uh, this is why it's so expensive to to switch polynomials because of of that part right right here. And wheels is getting cleared each time. Okay. Oh, another optimization that I'm having here. Um, it turns out that the first few primes don't add much weight for the for the values that we are searching for so i'm so i did an i mean prime sites as to say that we only search for for primes that are bigger than some prime because they will have more weight and even if we skipping those primes we're still taking some a uh, delta that will allow us to to find and, and, and see them anyway. We are losing some numbers, but we are gaining speed. OK. So next phase is sieving. And again, uh, start end. This measure the, the sieving time. And we are doing the search. 
Not many things changed here. We are working with a um, loop size. Previously, it was called a range. And there is a new thing. Instead of having the while through here, we're having the, the loops count here. So loops count times loop size is equals to M. That M. Um, okay. The base log is calculated differently now. It's a, a times x power 2 at b multiply x multiply 2 at c. So that is basically that thing. This is what we are trying to, to see. So the weight, the base log, is calculated based on that. The wheels loop is the same. And next we are extracting the, the primes. So the logic here didn't change except the deceiving uh, value in that, uh, that it's now calculated differently and also uh, a and b. Uh, actually, before we we had just this the a and, and, and the mod. And the mod and the civic value were the same one. But now because we are ignoring a, we still need to remember it for the solution extraction. So this is why it's now split between civic value and mod. So we are extracting the vector from the saving value, and then we are using mod to construct the bismuth value. Yeah. Also added, so this is the part where we are doing the logs. Log progress. And in here, I'm logging all those times. So during each interval, which happens every one second, we will see how much time it took for polynomial search, for saving, and also added metrics. Let's see where this one is used. So when we are adding to the matrix that can theoretically uh, exit the application and print the solution. So it prints those values. Time to finish was renamed to time till destination and print those. And also add those format in utility function to, to the logger. So format log and double to just make nice prints. All right, so this is it. Let me show you how it runs. This is the values that we've been uh, factoring over the last few episodes. Let's see how long does it take. So it took five, five seconds while I'm recording and it shows the, the completion percentage. So it completed 3%, 59, 60, 80, 84, and then it was done. It found 50 in bismuth values. This is how they went over time. The choosing polynomial time took 554 milliseconds, one second, one second, two, and 2.7 2 seconds. This is the saving time. This is the vector extraction time. This is the matrix time. Interestingly, in the matrix, you can see how the time is 
growing between the iterations. So there is one second between the iterations, 4.1, 5.1, etc. And the metrics time, well, I, I'll, I'll show you another execution. I actually prepared um, the logs from other executions and I'm saving them in execution logs. So let me show you how long does it take to save a value with the size of two, 200 bits. It takes 226 seconds, which is pretty nice. The time estimates are not so accurate, but also not so wrong. It provides a nice uh, picture about what, what is happening. So that prediction was pretty close right in the beginning. Before I started to talk about the metrics, so you see how here it takes only a few milliseconds. And as we go down, it starts to take a, a second. So the time it takes to do the metrics actually uh, grows with the number of vectors, but it's still a pretty reasonable time. Then the saving time, I chose the metric numbers to, to have the polynomial about half of the time of, of the saving. I saw that the best performance are happening around in th those variants. So back to episode 10, the magic numbers. It's a guess, but a good guess for now. I measured what's the performance or, or what is the best performance for several inputs, and then I computed that number by plotting it in some uh, table. And then I tried to connect everything to, to the bound, uh, be the loop size and loop size count. So just by playing with bits, optimizing all of those values. Now, it shows that it's not the best choice for it. We can revisit it later on to do something um, smarter using um, stress tools like we developed uh, in the first episodes and we can come up with better magic numbers but for now it provides pretty good performances so let's change that to 200 because this is the best we've been factoring so far if you have any questions please ask me in the facebook group or comment below the source code will be available at GitHub. Bye.